Japan has long had a problem with its falling population, and most recently, 2022 has shown a net population loss of circa 634,000. A whole host of factors has contributed to the issue, and now with an aging population and a shrinking young workforce, the Japan government is scratching its head and trying several solutions. Here's one way they can turn their tide in their favor. Welcome to another episode of Money Matters. According to the National Institute of Population and Social Security Research, Japan's population will fall to 87 million in 2070. Thus far, it has been in decline for the past 15 years, peaking in 2008 at 128 million. The problem, or part of the problem, is a lacking birth rate, leaving a shrinking and aging population which is considered a liability as the workforce is less creative, less vibrant and energetic, and a costly upkeep for a population prone to more frequent health issues. On the other hand, some would argue a shrinking population is good for the world as a whole, in the sense that the world population is already a strain on the world's resources. The world population has now surged past 8 billion. But that's another debate for another day. From an economic viewpoint, Japan's government is trying various ways to encourage and increase its birth rate. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida warned that Japan was on the brink of not being able to maintain social functions as a result of the looming demographic crisis. His task is to reverse the uh, declining birth rate with financial incentives and supporting childcare. Japan has long been a culture with a working male population with women who stay at home to care for the children and manage the home affairs. Graduates are trained with a promotion based on loyal years of service. The term job for life is the norm in Japan. Furthermore, the Japanese population has traditionally had very few foreigners. Its culture has not been accommodating to foreigners. However, its population is seeing a net inflow, and this inflow is on the rise, up at around 160,000 in recent years, more than double that of just 70,000 in 2017. And it is expected that foreigners will reach 10% of the population in 2070. Hardly a large proportion, but a quadrupling of the current share. If we look at why other nations' populations are falling, there's a cultural shift towards career centricity, social independence, and financial freedom, shutting the responsibilities and inconveniences of babies, the expense and heartache of raising a child, and even perhaps the hassle of long-term relationships. Or at the very least, they delay the steps towards marriage and family. You get my point. And now talks of an underpopulation crisis is starting to do the rounds. Europe has long been experiencing population decrease. Other developed nations such as the US have high net immigration, saving them from the same trend. China, partly through its success of the one-child policy, as well as the points mentioned earlier, has just started to see a decline too. India now has the largest population in the world at over 1.42 billion people, according to the United Nations. Now, I want to draw this to a close and keep this video short. Coming back to the issue with Japan, I don't believe financial incentives and support will drastically boost the birth rate. Certainly not in the short term. In a recent survey of 11,000 businesses, over half said they felt a labor shortage. A study has forecasted that Japan will face an, an 11 million worker shortfall, shortfall by 2040. I believe that women are the key to the labor shortage. When needs must, and needs must at this point in time, corporations must look towards a willing and qualified female workforce. They must move on from their centuries-old cultural traditions and realize that the solution is in front of them. The global labor force participation rate for women is 47% compared to 76% for men. In Japan, the female participation rate is around 54% compared to 56% in the US and 59% in the UK and 62% in Australia. All are seeing increases in the female participation rate. 
As the female workforce around the world continues to increase every year, Japan must play catch up if it is to combat its labor shortfall crisis in the short term. In the medium term, it must shift towards a foreigner friendly work culture, seeking overseas talent in its key industries. Increasing net immigration to, let's say, 250,000 and more is a healthy addition to its workforce. It could also increase the national retirement age, currently at age 61, edging towards age 65, like that of other developed nations. The US is currently at age 66 and two months and is slowly increasing. And of course, in the long term, it should encourage the population to start families and to start them earlier, this being a welcome trend to turn around the persistent birth rate decline. This is a deep-rooted cultural issue that is hard to tackle, but families need financial support and the government must pay to encourage couples to start families. Are you a parent? If not, how do you feel about the idea of starting a family? Let us know your thoughts about family life in our modern society. Let's discuss in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on this episode. Let us know what other topics you would like to hear about. Give the video a like if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next episode of Money Matters.